take off your gloves or whatever you're going to do. Okay, so you guys are all pretty good up here, right? On the upper arm. Okay, there's only three muscles on the front, one muscle on the back, right? So the muscle, three muscles on the front are bicep brachii, the cracobrachialis, and the brachialis. You guys get those muscles? Biceps brachii, where does it attach to the humerus? Nowhere, right? It goes from the scapula to the, the radius. That's all it does. It skips your humerus completely. It goes from the supracondylar tubercle of the uh, scapula to the, and the coracoid process down to the uh, radial head, right? Radial tuberosity, and causes you to be able to turn your hand. Okay, so because everybody grab your arm like this. Okay, now, I want you to stick your pinky up as high as you can and try and relax your bicep. <laughs> you can't. Because the bicep not only flexes your elbow and flexes your shoulder, but it also is the major supinator of the body. It turns your hand up like that, that supination. If you can hold a bowl of soup, you're supinating. If you need a bowl of soup, you're supine. Okay, so, <laughs> supine, supination, right? Pronation, supination. Pronation with your thumb down, that's pronated. This is supinated. And the major supinator is the bicep. Now, if you make yourself a muscle, grab it. Okay, now turn your hand around. You feel it go away? Your biceps really only work when your hand is supinated. When your hand is totally pronated, your bicep doesn't work because where it attaches onto your radius is facing the wrong way. Okay, so the other muscle, the one underneath there, the brachialis muscle, it attaches to the ulna, not the radius. The radius turns over, the ulna does not. And the way that you need to think about things is that your hand is attached to your radius. Your radius is connected to your ulna. Your ulna is attached to your elbow. Okay? So, anything attached to your radius is going to cause pronation and supination. If it's attached to your ulna, it's not. Okay? So your brachialis goes from here, the front of your, front of your humerus, to your ulna and causes flexion. And it doesn't matter which way your hand's facing because it's attached to the ulna, which doesn't turn over. The biceps brachii does. And then the last muscle in there is that little correcto brachialis. You guys found that. All three of those muscles are muscular cutaneous nerve. Okay? So everything, you put your hand like that, everything's muscular cutaneous. On the back, everything is radial. Okay? Radial, including the 12 muscles of the posterior forearm, and your triceps, which is the only muscle on the back. All of this is radial nerve. All of this, muscular cutaneous, which only leaves two nerves, right? Median and ulnar. So, quick, the eight muscles of the forearm, okay? Eight muscles of the forearm are four, superficially, one in the middle, and three deep. Four minus one equals three, right? So, that's the way they're arranged. And if you take your hand, you put your thumb right here on your medial epicondyle, put your four fingers down like this, straight down your arm, and go pass, fail, pass, fail, with each finger, pass, fail, pass, fail, pass. okay? Pass, the first finger, you just do that, reaches over, grabs your radius, and flips it over. That's the brachial radialis muscle. Okay? That's all it does. Reaches over, grabs the head of the, the, the radial, just past the radial tuberosity, and flips your arm over. Okay? It's called the pronator teres. Teres means round. It's the round one. The square one's down. So, pronator teres. Then, flexor, carpi, radialis. Flexor, because it's on the flexor side. Carpi, because it attaches to a wrist bone. And radialis, it's on the thumb side, okay? It causes flexion, it also causes, of the wrist, it also causes what we call radial deviation now. Then palmaris longus, if you do this, see that little tendon that pops out? The tendon pops out because the palmaris longus is the only tendon that doesn't go through the, break, the um, carpal tunnel, right? So that's that one popping up there. And all it does is flexion of the wrist. It grabs hold of the uh, palmar sheath. Some people have it, some people don't. About 30% of people don't have a pulmonaris longus. The last one, flexor carpi ulnaris. So from here to there, okay, causes ulnar deviation or flexion of the wrist. Okay, flexion, ulnar deviation. The next muscle is the one, flexor digitorum superficialis. Make sure you do this when you say that word. Flexor digitorum superficialis. Notice I'm making the girly fist, okay? Not one of these fists. Okay, but like a bye-bye fist. <laughs> okay, because the flexor digitorum superficialis goes to the middle phalanx of each one of the fingers. And all it can do is close the hand like this, because it doesn't go to the tips of the fingers. So it can't do that. 
We can't flex the tips. That's flexor digitorum profundus. Okay? So flexor digitorum superficialis is the middle muscle. Runs from the medial epicondyle and runs all the way down to all four of the last digits, those four. Okay? The next muscle is flexor digitorum profundus. Okay, it's one of the three D. And the flexor digitorum profundus goes all the way to the tips of the fingers. It just does the tips. Okay, it makes you make a complete fist. Okay, when I say the deep muscles, I always do this. Okay? So what it does curls up all four fingers. The next muscle, flexor pollicis longus, makes you hide that thumb under there. Okay? That's flexion of the thumb. Okay? Flexor pollicis longus. It goes all the way to the tip of the thumb and causes flexion of the thumb. Okay? We'll do the hand next time. Okay, but flexion of the fingers, flexion of the thumb, and then you gotta pull it up like you're gonna punch somebody, and that must that motion is what? Pronation. Pronation. And the last muscle, pronator quadratus, is here in the wrist. Okay, it goes straight across from the radius to the ulna and causes you to flip your hand over. That's all eight muscles of the forearm. Now, what are their innervation? I don't know. Median. That's the answer. Okay? Because there's only two muscles that are innervated by the flexor by the ulnar nerve. And they're actually pinched. The ulnar nerve is pinched between those two muscles. The flexor carpi ulnaris. Right underneath it, you're going to find the ulnar nerve. And underneath the ulnar nerve is the flexor digitorum profundus muscle. And so that's the only two muscles that it innervates. All of the other muscles, including the radial half of the flexor digitorum profundus that's not actually touching, that's all median nerve. But you don't care, because you don't need to learn all the other muscles, because you only need to learn one and a half muscle, the flexor carpi ulnaris and one half of the flexor digitorum profundus. Everything else, I don't know, median, right? Nice. When you get to the hand, it's exactly the opposite. In your hands, there are lumbricals, which do this, squeeze really tight like that. Can you feel in between your knuckles? Starts to hurt. That's the lumbrical muscles. And they cause, they go from the flexor digitorum profundus tendon and reach around the radial side and grab the extensor hood so that no matter where they pull, they make you extend your finger. Okay? But they also flex at the metacarpal phalangeal joints. That's why I call them puppet muscles. Okay? They're called the lumbricals. Now, I say one half loaf, L O A F, is median. Everything else is ulnar. So one half loaf, one half of the lumbricals, one half of L, the two median uh, nerve ones are uh, the second and third digit, okay? The second and third digit are the median lumbricals, okay? Causing that, okay? Just those two fingers. And the OAF, opponents, abductor, and flexor pollicis, okay? Which is all of this muscle that you feel here in the phenar eminence. That's your one half loaf, okay? <coughs> Take your fingers and put them together like that, okay? Because it's those lumbricals, and then the opponents, adductor, and flexor pollicis. You get that? Everything else in the hand, including the ulnar lumbricals and the uh, abductor, flexor, and uh, opponents, digiti minimi, which is the hypothenar eminence, as well as the pads and dabs, palmar interosseae and dorsal interosseae of the hand, which make you do this. They're all ulnar, so the only ones you have to learn are these. Okay, so the hand mostly ulnar and a little bit median, one half loaf, one half of the lumbricals, the opponents, abductor, and flexor, pollicis, which is what your thumbs are called. Everything else ulnar. So do this. Okay, look at your fingernails, guys always do this, but girls do this. Right? <laughs> so stick your fingers out and look at it. Spread your fingers back together. Spread your fingers back together. Look at the the uh, nail on your middle finger. When you spread your fingers out, does it move? No. Not really. That's the midline of your hand. Just doing that. That's the midline. So, the muscles that pull them back together are the adductors. Okay? Adduction. The palmar adductors, I call them pads. The palmar interosseae muscles are palmar adductors. They bring your fingers back together. Now, your thumb one doesn't count because that's the pollicis, right? Adductor, adductor pollicis. Adductor pollicis. So these fingers coming back together, that's adduction. 